Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. Today we're going to do a quick video, and when I say quick video, you may have some idea of what I mean by a quick video. We'll see how quick it turns out to be on the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series. Now this is sort of a basic video to tell people who don't know already what the series is, what it covers, and some very general concepts. Uh, we're not going to be talking about specific rules. We're going to be just going over the system at a very high level. So if you are familiar with Great Campaigns of the American Civil War, this is not for you, really. It's for people who are interested in war games but have never experienced this uh, series before. Um, and then hopefully we will have laid the groundwork to do future videos about games in this series. So let us begin. And we're going to just start on Board Game Geek here with the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War family page. Um, as we can see, there's, uh, there's a bunch of games in the series. The best way to go through this is actually to click here on the GCACW series wiki page. I will have a link to this page in the video description. So check that out. And most um, succinctly, this page shows us what games have come out in this series so far and what games are coming. And there's a bit, little bit of additional information as well. So the game series was started in 1992 by designer Joe Balkowski. The first game in the series is Stonewall Jackson's Way. That covers the second Manassas campaign in 1862. Um, it is an amazing game. Um, actually owned it back in the day. I uh, never played it at that time and got rid of it. Um, I owned a couple of these other early Avalon Hill ones too. This was followed the following year by Here Come the Rebels, uh, volume two in the series, which is the Antietam campaign. Roads to Gettysburg, of course, covers the Gettysburg campaigns, also in 1993. I don't really remember the specific chronology of how these things came out, uh, but I do seem to recall them being spaced fairly closely together. The next game in the series was Stonewall in the Valley. This is Jackson's Valley campaign of 1862. Uh, this is topically, for reasons that I'll get to, either in this video or one of the following ones, um, a really, really well-suited campaign to simulate using this system. Um, next, we have the first game in the series that was not designed by the originator, Joe Balkowski, Stonewall's Last Battle, the Chancellorsville Campaign. This was an Ed Beach design. Ed is still with the series, and Joe has recently come back as well. Both of them were at Winter Offensive talking about it, for example. Stonewall's Last Battle is the Chancellorsville Campaign. Um, as, as of 1863, as you may know, that was in fact Stonewall Jackson's last battle shot by his own men at, at that, in that battle and died a couple days later. Um, it is the smallest game in the series, and amazingly enough, there is an unboxing video, so please check that out. I have just recently picked uh, this particular one up. Um, it's a one-map campaign, and actually one of the maps is essentially identical to the same area map in Stonewall Jackson's Way. So it almost didn't need its own map, but it got its own module anyway. There was talk of, apparently at the time, of different ways to present that, whether it could be a, an article in the general or what, but it, it got its own box game. And it, because it's one map, it will lend itself, I think, well to a video-making process. So if we play a, 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 one of these games on the channel in depth, it, it could be Stonewall's Last Battle, but all of these games, the entire series from the first one to the current ones, all have really strong scenario selections. In the early games, it's not as many scenarios, but they're still very good. The small scenarios are totally worth playing. It's not like, well, I don't want to play anything but the whole campaign because that's just a waste. No, these are good scenarios, um, not just for learning, but they're they're good to keep playing, actually. I've played Cedar Mountain and the Inta. I forget which, which Antietam scenario I've played multiple times now, and I've enjoyed it every time. Anyway, the next game in the series was the last done by the Avalon Hill Game Company. This was on to Richmond from 1998. This is the Peninsula Campaign, McClellan's versus Lee. Um, and it's another one that, like Stonewall in the Valley, is really well suited to be treated in this system. This one is the only game in the series that I actually do not have. Fortunately, we'll get to why. That's not such a big problem later. The next game was actually, there was a, a bit of a delay, and this was actually released by Multiman Publishing, the current stewards of the great campaigns of the American Civil War system. This is Grant Takes Command. I believe I said in a previous episode that this was the Wilderness Campaign. This is the Overland Campaign. Um, it's another two-mapper. Most of these games, we'll get to the ones that aren't in a second, are two-map games, except for... Stonewall's Last Battle, which is a one-map game, and Stonewall in the Valley, which is a three-map game. So this kind of covers, ending with Grant Takes Command, the original series from Avalon Hill, even though Multiman did the last one. I think that most of the work was actually done under the auspices of Avalon Hill, or at least with the assumption that it would be published um, 
by Avalon Hill before the dots sold out. So, 2009, um, eight years have elapsed, and Multiman Publishing is going to release the first game in their own uh, sequence of Great Campaigns of the American Civil War games. That game is Battle Above the Clouds. This is actually the first game in the series that I played, and it wasn't that long ago. Thank you, Phil, for getting me in trouble with this series. Um, this is a game about the uh, Chickamauga and Chattanooga campaigns. It is a very good game. It is also the first game in the series to take place in the Western theater, making it more interesting. Well, I don't want to say more interesting, but making it interesting for reasons of how gameplay in the series differs from gameplay in the Eastern theater, um, where the battles that are depicted tend to be early. The Confederates tend to have clear command advantages, like Confederates win all ties in any of the previous games. That's not the... I'm not sure about Under Richmond and Grant Takes Command. I'm not sure about Grant Takes Command. Under Richmond, Confederates win all ties. Um, that ceases to be the case. It becomes a little more nuanced than that in Western theater and later games as the Union begins to catch up with the Confederacy in terms of command efficiency and prowess. So, uh, Battle Above the Clouds, 2009. 2013, Stonewall Jackson's Way 2. Now, this is a, a significant shift in the product line uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's, a, it's another new game in the series. It's the first um, revision of an original game in the series, and it... Uh, it, it splits the emphasis of the series from volumes, meaning a boxed game like Here Come the Rebels or whatever, into what we now call modules. So Stonewall Jackson's Way contains the Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 module, which is a revision of the original Stonewall Jackson's Way module, which was con contained in Stonewall Jackson's Way. But it also contains a second module called All Green Alike, which is First Manassas. Um, it's Actually, you might think, oh, well, it's earlier in the war, it's smaller forces, it's probably easier to play, right? It's actually got a lot, it's, it's got, I wouldn't recommend it as a first game in the series, but the box contains both modules, so you can do both first and second Manassas. And I want to say that at least one or two of those scenarios require maps from Here Come the Rebels, which at this time was a problem if you happened not to have Here Come the Rebels. But we'll get to why that's not a problem anymore either. Next, uh, we had another five years elapse, and Multiman did something uh, I'm not sure I had seen them do before. They announced a like dual pre-order program where they're going to release two games in the series, one a volume of revisions to older products, and one entirely new. And if you pre-order them together, you get a little even more discount uh, for the pre-order, which is what I did. The two games are Atlanta is Ours and Roads to Gettysburg 2. Um, Atlanta is Ours is a is a module about Sherman's Atlanta campaign. It is, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it looks amazing. Um, it's also a two map game. Uh, it is set also in the Western theater and it is relatively late in the war. So again, that Confederate command superiority has begun to degrade, well, has degraded even more, let me put it that way. Um, but it's also a long campaign. So there are rules in it for strategic pauses and things like that. So it's, <clears throat> it looks super interesting. Would love to play it. Uh, there's, I'll get to play it sooner or later. Let me put it that way. The other volume there is Roads to Gettysburg 2, Lee Strikes North. Now, this is a big package, and the box is fairly expensive, but it contains not just Roads to Gettysburg 2, the revision of Roads to Gettysburg. It contains Here Come the Rebels 2, the revision of Here Come the Rebels, and it contains a third module called Rebels in the White House, which originally appeared in the skirmish, I believe in this skirmisher magazine um, which is Jubal Early's 1864 raid on Washington I actually saw this on a table at haven't played that either but I have played a bunch of stuff from Gettysburg and well I don't want to say a bunch but I have played stuff from Gettysburg and Antietam haven't played um, rebels in the White House but it was on a table at least one table it might have been two at winter offensive so people are playing this stuff so it's it's a big package with a relatively big price tag if you look at like the component list where it's like, oh, it's five counter sheets or whatever it is. It's four maps. It doesn't seem that big, but it, it really is big. There's a lot of scenarios in that box. There's, I, I think, 20 or more scenarios in that box between the three modules. There is a lot to do there. And because it reprints the new versions of the Here Come the Rebels map, now you can play those combined scenarios with, of, from Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 without having the original Here Come the Rebels. So this brings us up to where the series is today. These are the latest games in the series. So let's before we move on to the future, which has already been mentioned on the channel and it's already been talked about on the internet, so this isn't news as such. 
Um, let's take a quick look at Multiman's product page where we will see that I believe the only two products available are Atlanta is ours and Roads to Gettysburg 2. Um, these are the current prices. Can you get them for less? Probably. Um, the two out of print ones currently are Battle Above the Clouds and Stonewall Jackson's Week 2. And we also have the two issues of The Skirmisher, which was the periodical uh, produced by Multiman uh, to support great campaigns in the American Civil War. Uh, there were two issues. There is talk. Um, nobody said we're doing this, but there is talk of reviving uh, either The Skirmisher or creating a new uh, magazine to support great campaigns of the American Civil War because it seems like the series has really taken off over the last couple of years and boy it seems like it based on what I saw at Winter Offensive. We'll see how it looks at uh, WBC as well. There was a lot of people uh, as you know if you watched either my watch my pictures on social media which were overwhelmed by great campaigns pictures um, or watch the recap video the after action report from winter offensive there's a lot of talk about great campaigns in there as well um, so this is what's available right now so it's basically just these two games some of these games go for relatively high prices if you want to hunt them down on the secondary market the ones that are relatively inexpensive are stonewall jackson's way here come the rebels and roads to gettysburg um Stonewall in the Valley goes for decent change. Stonewall's Last Battle. I got it for 50 bucks on eBay like last week. That's not bad. In the, this is in the shrink wrap. Although upon opening the shrink wrap, it's, it's a bit musty. Uh, but still, it's a 1996 game too. So, you know, what am I going to complain? And, and that's a very reasonable price. The big one is on to Richmond. Um, it can go for two, three hundred dollars maybe even more. Um, I think that's too much. But... Um, Here's what is on the slate for future games in the great campaigns of this American Civil War series. At Winter Offensive this year, on at least two and maybe three or four tables, we had the next game, which is Hood Strikes North. Hood Strikes North is John Bell Hood's 1864 Invasion of Tennessee. Um, it is also a one-map game, and while not streamlined in any meaningful way, um, it is poised to offer a, a good introduction to the series because it's only one map. And you might think, well, you know, it's not, you know, it's you, you'd want to play in the entire area and, and it's only one map. One map is a ton of space in this series. Um, so fear not, there will be plenty to do. I don't have any specific information beyond that other than that there will be a good selection of scenarios. I expect it to be an amazing game. I am also told directly that it will be up for pre-order relatively soon. I'm filming this video on January 31st, 2020. My expectation, based on what they told me, is that sometime in Q1, we will see uh, Hood Strikes North on pre-order. Along with that, B BGG's not listing this, but it's it's been talked about online, is a reprint of Stonewall Jackson's Way 2. And again, that's one of those double packages. It's got two modules in it. There's tons of content in it. Um, the only change that is being made, with the possible exception of incorporating errata, is, um, you know, it's a good question. It, will it contain the updated rule book? It would be awesome if it did, but I don't know that it does because I didn't think to ask that question of the actual folks. Um, but it will have a redone uh, unit counter sheet to match the style of unit counters that were provided in Atlanta is ours and Roads to Gettysburg too. People seem to like those more. Um, I like the ones in Battle of the Clouds and Stonewall Jackson's Way too. I think they are attractive, but I feel that they are also somewhat visually busy and hard to parse when you're looking at them on a map, and I don't appreciate that particularly. Um, so I do have a preference not as strong a preference as others, but I do have a preference for the the style in the two newest games, which is closer to the style uh, of the old Avalon Hill unit counters. Um, after that, what is on the table is on to Richmond 2. Now, this is a super exciting product because it will reprint two long out of print products and also contain new material. Um, it will have On to Richmond 2, so revised Peninsula Campaign. It will have Grant Takes Command, so revised Overland Campaign. And it will have an untitled, as far as I know, additional third module on the Petersburg Campaign, which, from what they were saying, uh, it actually plays fairly well. It's not just a you know one of these type of deals where you got trench warfare in pre-World War I. Um, and then, of course, there were the two issues of the Skirmisher. Um, there are two mini-modules that appeared in the Skirmisher. <coughs> One is Rebels in the White House, which is uh, 
available in Roads to Gettysburg too. The skirmishers are also long out of print, by the way, and, and relatively difficult to get. Um, the other one is Burnside Takes Command. Now, one thing you notice when you're looking at the great campaigns of the American Civil War maps, and I'll show you maps in a minute here, um, is that A, they're incredibly gorgeous, and B, that the vast majority of the Civil War's Eastern Theater is on those maps. Why is there no Battle of Fredericksburg scenarios? Well, Burnside Takes Command is what fixes that issue. Um, that is the Fredericksburg campaign. Um, and then there's a list here on BGG, which I encourage you to look through of uh, if you've got any of these old generals or, or can find PDF copies of these old generals online um, of articles and, and such. So, And there's some resources at the bottom, which I will allow you to go through at your leisure. But let's take a look at the maps first because I want to talk very briefly about the series structure as a war game. Um, each module contains a number of scenarios and there is a set of basic rules and a set of advanced rules and the, the basic rules are used for scenarios some of which are quite long and the advanced rules are used for campaigns some of which are relatively short. So depending on the module you're looking at you're going to have somewhere between four and say 15 short scenarios and somewhere between two and six advanced campaigns. Um, advanced campaigns add rules for things like supply and uh, uh, burning enemy uh, rail hubs and things like that, uh, that you're not really terribly concerned about in the basic game. But at the same time, the basic game is very satisfying to play. Um, what we have here is one of the, is a zoom in of uh, one of the Here Come the Rebels maps. And of course, you, you may notice Sharpsburg dead smack in the middle here, Antietam Creek going up here. And, and even, not only are these maps incredibly attractive, but they are rich with uh, American Civil War history. I mean, here we have uh, the Rohrbach Bridge, um, Snavely's Ford, uh, the Middle Bridge, we have. Um, Smoketown and Shepherdstown and Martinsburg and the Dunker Church, for example, all this stuff is on the map, these individual landmarks, um, because the source maps that these were created from are that detailed. I think the current generation of maps is all, they're all by Charlie Kibler, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if that's not correct. Uh, I know Rick Barber did some of the map work on some of the earlier v volumes, and it may be that there was a third artist involved as well. Um, but if we zoom back out, this is, I believe, a good chunk of the uh, Here Come the Rebels West map. So um, you can see here that as you're maneuvering around in here, um, I should talk about scale, actually. So this, this, the scale is one, uh, one mile per hex. It is one day per turn. And the unit scale is divisions and brigades. Um, so each turn you will have a number of activations that are performed and you can activate individual units or commands um, and that is a random process um, one you're rolling an initiative roll each time and we'll get into the details of the mechanics in a future video but you're rolling an initiative roll whoever wins the initiative roll gets to pick a, a unit to activate or they can activate a leader who can then activate subordinate units to that leader within command range um, and then you, you move all those units and you can spend part of your movement to conduct a battle which might be a hasty battle if you only spend one movement point to do it or a prepared battle if you spend four movement points to do it or whatever it costs it's different between infantry and cavalry um, and also the type of unit you activate determines how many movement points you get because that's random too. If you activate an infantry command, then you're going to roll 1d6 to see how many movement points you get with that command to move. Um, and there's there are modifiers to that number, but it's I'm oversimplifying to say it's plus one. It's, it's almost always plus one or more. Um, but if it is a cavalry unit, you will roll two dice and you may add another number for a leader that may be present or within command range of that uh, thing that you just activated. Um, and this will continue until both sides pass. Um, if it sounds like this isn't the kind of system that will work multiplayer as opposed to one versus one. Um, I was concerned about that too, and in practice, I was overthinking it. It worked completely fine to just say, okay, it's our turn, who wants to go? 
Um, that worked totally fine. I mean, we had sort of an overall commander at Winter Offensive. Uh, we played like eight people total at the table, and we had no issues with it whatsoever. It is completely seamless to just just wing it as far as who gets what activations at the time based on the, the, the plan that that faction has. Um, what else do I want to say about this with, without getting too deep into the weeds? Um, if you haven't been able to tell, and you probably have if you've seen the previous videos that I've done in the series, um, th this is one of my favorite series. It was introduced to me um, five or six years ago, I think, by one of the folks on the Google Plus War Games group, which I ran uh, at the, till that went away. Um, and we had played a game of it um, on Vassal uh, via Skype in this case. And it was tremendous fun. I was like, wow, I can totally see why some people have trouble grasping how this works dynamically. But I, I also see why this is a fantastic system. It really highlights, it's an operational system. It doesn't simulate battles in much detail. Battles are fairly abstract. Um, what it does is it simulates the maneuver, the march to battle. That was the intention of the series in the first place. It does it wonderfully. Uh, I love this series. I think it's one of the best series of war games that I currently play. And of course, all the ones that I play are the best ones. So um, we're going to be seeing more great campaigns of the American Civil War content on this channel. Don't promise any specific timetable. I don't promise any specific title. Although if there is a specific scenario you would like to see or a specific Civil War battle that's covered by the series that you'd like me to, 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 to take a look at on video, mention it in the comments below. I would like to thank you for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed watching it and subscribe to the channel. Um, we have extra channel news uh, coming up pretty fast here, so please stay tuned. Uh, keep, keep your eyes on the channel. We will have uh, additional stuff coming. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.